are such an asshole. All right, we have a Clary test request. Haven't had one of those in a while. <clears throat> Regular guy, Alex writes, good evening, uh, Clary. How much for a Clary test on Malcolm X? It fits the season. All I can say is that he was way ahead of his time, but the media portrayed him as a bigot fucking typical. Regardless, let me know your price. Thank you. Well, I have to be honest. I don't know anything about Malcolm X. I'll be perfectly honest. Why? Because by about the eighth time we had the whole black history stuff taught to us in school, I wasn't paying attention. Same thing with, because uh, I went to a parochial school, Christian school uh, for my elementary years. Like I stopped paying attention to the book of Exodus because by the third time you find out, hey, I bet the Jews are going to escape Egypt again. I bet you Pharaoh ain't going to get them. And you just kind of like tune out. And so unfortunately, this is, I think, a common criticism we could say about most K through 13 education is the teachers are so boring and they repeat the same stuff over and over and over again. By about the third or fourth grade, anyone who might otherwise have like a genuine intellectual interest in it has zoned out, checked out, and then they're great C minus D plus students like I was. And then everyone graduates and they still can't play the war game, which if you don't know, try it on your girlfriend. It's Dick Masterson's war game where you ask girls like, what were the dates of the main wars of the United, the Revolutionary War? Or no, you, yeah, you say Revolutionary War. Um, 1850, the Civil War. 1851, it's like, wow. Why did you any of you go to college? <clears throat> anyway, so... uh. Yeah, I was a kid when they were teaching that to us. And it's just like, oh, dude, I hate being here. And <laughs> and then Wisconsin, like, there ain't no black people here. What? <laughs> yes, is it like last year? Yeah. Rosa Parks sat up front again, right? She didn't, we didn't change that, huh? <sighs> Don't hate black people. Oh, because the entire, the rest of the year, that's what you've been telling us to do, is to hate black people. But this time, they're going to learn about Malcolm X and the slight differences in philosophies between him and other leaders of the of the black civil rights era. Now I'm going to pay attention. Not because you've beaten the hell out of him. God. <laughs> oh, and don't tell us interesting stuff about black people like Bass, Bass Reeves or, um, was it Sam Little? No. Something smalls. You know, don't tell us any exciting stuff like that. No, give us the boring crap. Yeah. <clears throat> uh, all right. So let's go to Malcolm X. Let's go put the Clary test on him. He died at 40. He was 40 years old. Okay. Malcolm X, born Malcolm Little, 1925, 1965, African-American Muslim minister. Oh, I didn't know he was Muslim. And human rights activist who was national, who was a popular figure to civil rights. He was best known for his time spent as a vocal spokesman for the nation of Islam. Malcolm spent his adolescent life in a series of foster homes. Okay. It didn't come from wealth. All right. So far he's doing pretty well on the test. I wonder what he would say about single moms nowadays. I, I'd be real curious. Um, or with relatives after his father's death and his mother's hospitalization. Oh, okay. Never mind. That's unfortunate. Uh, mom didn't do anything. He engaged in several illicit activities, eventually being sentenced 10 years in prison, 1946, for larceny and breaking and entering. What's larceny? Crime of unlawful taking or theft of personal property. Of another person's business. Oh. Why didn't they just say theft? In prison, he joined the nation of Islam, adopted the name Malcolm X to symbolize his unknown African ancestral name, and quickly became one of the organization's most influential leaders, being paroled in 1952. So he was there for six years. Malcolm X then served as the public face of the organization for a dozen years, where he advocated black empowerment, black supremacy. Well, I'm against him there. And a separation of black and white Americans. Meh. Is that what we do already? People want to live where they want to live. I'm not going to stop them. Right? Very libertarian approach. And publicly criticized the mainstream civil rights movement for its emphasis on nonviolence and racial integration. <clears throat> Malcolm X also expressed pride in some of the nation's social welfare achievements. Namely, its free drug rehabilitation program. 
throughout his life beginning in the 1950s. Malcolm X endured surveillance from the federal uh, FBI and for the nation's supposed links to communism. Uh, I'm trying to figure out like where, well, I guess uh, so far he didn't go to school. Um, and even then he'd be grandfathered under the, uh, you know, the old man boomer clause. Um, cause any degree back then would have been a good degree. So he didn't, he didn't major in stupid stuff. See, here's where, <clears throat> here's where I probably wouldn't. This is why he's going to lose some points. Is and now, now, admittedly, unfortunately, he died early, so Lord knows what would have happened. But he just ended up working for a nonprofit, essentially, right? Which I consider the same as government. Sixties, Malcolm began to grow disillusioned with the nation of Elam, uh, Islam, as well as its leader Elijah Muhammad. He subsequently embraced Sunni Islam and the civil rights movement after completing the Hajj to Mecca, and became known as El Hajj Malik El Shabazz. After a brief period of travels across Africa, he publicly renounced the nation of Islam and found the Islamic Mosque Incorporated and the Pan-African Organization. See, dude, work a job. See, this is, I understand if you do this on the side, okay? If you want to participate in politics or religion or nonprofit or, or social causes, by all means, please do. But don't become Jesse Jackson and make it your daytime gig. I mean, it's, it's, and that's why I got to give he, what did he, does he have any real world working experience? He must have as a kid. Okay. Let's go to the early years. See if he has some real world working experience. Uh, fourth of seven children. <clears throat> Garvey. Parents were nonprofit. Ku Klux Klan threats relocated. Oh, in Milwaukee. Oh, I went to my old town. Six father died, streetcar, but have murdered. Okay. Dating is a part of national level compared with this child. Oh. Nervous breakdown, Kalamazoo. Okay, here we go. Left school in 1941 before graduating. He excelled in junior high school, but dropped out of high school after a white teacher told him that practicing law, his aspiration at the time, was no realistic goal for a bleep. <clears throat> so law, it, I, it's, it's I'm going to go and be a, yeah, I'm smelling nonprofit. Uh, he held, the, okay, 14 to 21, held a variety of jobs while living with his half-sister, Ella Little Collins in Roxbury, neighborhood Boston, short-time fleeing, moved to Michigan, Harlem, found employment, New Haven Railroad, engaged in drug dealing, gambling, racketeering, robbery, and pimping. That's legit work. I won't lie. That's legit. Might be illegal, but it's legit. So he does have real-world working experience. All right, so he, he gets on that. So no stupid degree. Um, has real-world working experience. Um, okay. No stupid degree has real world working experience. Did not come from wealth. What, you know, what is he doing now? Well, he's dead. And this is why I'm going to have to give him a point, which you don't want points. Points are bad. This is like golf. You want no points. Uh, it's the nonprofit aspiring activist. Um, uh, I can't, I can't get behind that. I just can't get behind it. So, uh, yeah, he gets a point. Against him. Would I like to have a beer with him? Yes, but he's Muslim, so he wouldn't have a beer. But yeah, would I like to hang out with him? Sure. Have an intellectual conversation. Uh, should he run for office? I guess a better question. Would I vote for him for president? Probably not, because he probably is a leftist. Um, I don't trust people that are all nonprofits and avoid the real world of work. I mean, he's essentially, he was just a politician after he got out of jail. That's what he was. Which is fine if you do it on your free time. <clears throat> but what did you produce? Um, and but he could run. He absolutely could. And I think he'd be better than 90% of the people running right now, certainly within the black community. Give me give me Malcolm X over Ilian Omar. <laughs> I mean, at least Malcolm went through some tough times. So there we go. All right. Any super chats. Classified Chappie, 10 bucks. Stevie Ray, the wrestler, mentioned 
of reading the books about history that wasn't shown about Malcolm X blows everything over what we learned about Malcolm X or anything related to school. Right. I mean, it. my, my point is, and they, he was occasionally mentioned. It was just by that time, it was just kill me now. I don't want to be in school. This is prison. You know, I, the subjects I was good at, I was only good at because it was math and I could do that. Like, okay, yeah, that makes sense. I enjoyed physics a little bit because like, oh, is that how nuclear explosions occur? All right, that's cool. But history, social science, in the case of the Christian school, Bible history. <sighs> We're going to study the Civil War again. Really? C can we just watch Glory? Which was not... A movie when I was in school at the time. Look at this guy. Who's this Hanyaker? Two bucks. Any advice on what to do when I have some problems? You you should master the art of handling. And you just can't do that overnight. One must spend decades of time mastering the art of handling. If not, girls with fake tits will help. That's <laughs> my solution to everything. Uh, that's it. All right, there we go. See you guys later. Toodles.